The drone strikes that are coming in from southern Lebanon into Israel have always been problematic, certainly since the massacre of October the 7th, Hezbollah shortly thereafter joining the fray, aligning itself with Hamas in so doing. But at this particular time, those drone strikes have taken on even greater significance because Israel and fr quite frankly, everybody who's aligned with the states of Israel is in something of a waiting game to see whether or not Hezbollah is going to play a central role in the reprisal that Iran has promised against the state of Israel. Therefore, the drones that are penetrating Israeli airspace that have caused the death of Israelis, including today, those drones are being factored in by Israeli analysts, by the Israeli defense establishment to determine whether or not these constitute part of that mass reprisal threatened by Iran. And the assessment at this particular time is that these drone strikes are not actually part of that reprisal by Iran, that Iran is expected to launch in retaliation for what is mooted to have been Israel's correct and proper elimination of Ishmael Khania, one of the masterminds of Hamas, who was at the hospitality of the Iranians inside Tehran recently. At this particular time, as I mentioned, Israel is in a waiting game. Recently, in response to the killing of 12 members of the Druze community inside northern Israel in the Druze village of Mashtal Shams, which is very close indeed to the border with southern Lebanon, recently 12 children of the Druze community were killed by way of an attack that was launched by Hezbollah. Now, to put this into British terms, one can imagine there are 11 young kids who are playing a football match in the city of Newcastle, and then suddenly from the city of Edinburgh is launched an attack that not only kills all 11 on the football pitch, but also one of the reservists sitting on the sideline. That is the reality that the Druze community found itself facing on that fateful day as a consequence of the attack launched by Hezbollah. As a response to that, Israel launched a targeted killing against what is roughly the equivalent of the military chief of staff of Hezbollah's terror army, eliminating him. In addition to that, at a similar time, Israel is purported, mooted, rumored to be responsible for the killing and elimination of Ismail Khania. Khania was inside Tehran at the hospitality of the Iran Revolutionary Guards Corps to celebrate the incoming coronation, if you like, of the Iranian president. And it was inside Iran's territory, inside Tehran, at that hospitality, that Ishmael Khania was eliminated. Now, that is a massive blow to the national pride of the Iranians. And as a consequence of that, Iran has really climbed somewhat up a tree and said that it will bring a massive retaliation against the state of Israel. And it has actually said that part of its motivation for doing so is the blow to its national pride that came about by way of this targeted killing that Israel is purported to have carried out. Now, with all of that having been said, I'm firmly of the view that the states of Israel should be preemptively attacking Iran's nuclear capabilities at this time, together with relevant allies in the area. It should take advantage of this extended lame duck period in American presidential politics. The lame duck period typically refers to the period between the November elections and the January of the year thereafter, in which the incoming president takes office. That period between the November and the January is a lame duck period of time, where Israel has been known in the past to launch military offenses against key challenges to its national security. We saw it do so, for example, in 2008 and 2009, between the election of President-elect Barack Obama and his coming to the White House in the January thereafter. Here, we have an extended lame duck period because we have a President Biden who will not be running for re-election. We do not know whether Kamala Harris will be elected to the presidency. We don't know whether Donald Trump will be elected to the presidency. It's anybody's game at this stage. Israel should take advantage of that, and it should preemptively, very deliberately and proactively 
take out Hezbollah's aerial capabilities inside southern Lebanon, and it should also launch the required strike to downgrade and eliminate Iran's nuclear weapons capabilities. This is the time to do it. In my opinion, it is not the time for us to sit and wait and wonder how our enemies, Iran and Hezbollah, intend to strike us and to terrorize us yet again. So for the past few decades, I feel that many of the malign entities in the Middle East have traded on basically what can be equated with street rep, reputation. We saw the Hamas terror army doing that. We saw Hezbollah doing that. We've certainly seen Iran doing that. Now, Israel was tragically caught off guard on October 7th. The events of that horrific day of massacre are very well pronounced in the collective memory of all Israelis and all who are interested in the subject of Israel's security. But since that day, the State of Israel and the defense establishment has shown its ability to close down, fight, and destroy the enemy as and when it meets with that enemy. That's on the ground inside Gaza, for example, facing down Hamas. From an aerial perspective, we have also shown our ability to defend ourselves against the unprecedented aerial attack of more than 300 munitions launched from Iran Iranian sovereign, sovereign territory toward the state of Israel by way of an air defense array that includes Israel's aerial defense capabilities, the Jordanian air defense capabilities, British, the Americans, the Qataris, the French, and more. That was very effectively on show in April following Iran's attack towards Israel's sovereign territory. It will be in effect again in the event that Iran chooses to launch a direct strike by way of its missiles, munitions, and drones from Iran toward Israel. It will be on full display again. And quite frankly, I think that Iran is in a bit of a bind now because in terms of a direct kinetic strike against the state of Israel, its failed attempt to launch a massive aerial bombardment on Israel's sovereign territory in April has shown Iran in and of itself to be something of a paper tiger. It has been trading on reputation. What is far more dangerous is the threat that is posed by Hezbollah and Hezbollah's aerial munitions, its drones, its rockets, its missiles, because those are proximate to the state of Israel. There is a shorter warning time there that Israel will benefit from. And also the maneuverability of those aerial capabilities means that there is an element of surprise that Hezbollah enjoys that Iran does not enjoy. But quite frankly, I believe that Israel is more than capable of defending itself against the various incoming aerial threats that may be targeting it in response to Iran having its nose twisted out of joint somewhat as a result of the targeted killing of Ishmael Khania. And I think that Israel really, if there's one lesson it should have learned, hopefully has learned and internalized post-October 7th, is that it does not wait to be attacked Rather, it will attack that and those that come to threaten its very existence. Right now, you have General Carrillo, the commander of CENTCOM, Central Command of the United States military, over in the state of Israel. He is in very close talks and very close coordination with his counterpart, the chief of the general staff of the Israel Defense Forces, Lieutenant General Heltsi Halevi. He's there, General Carrillo, essentially to make sure that that same defense array, that same air defense array that was proven so effective in April can be put back together again, can be reconstituted, reconstructed, despite incidentally some of the diplomatic discord that is running hard and heavy behind the scenes of what will take place in the event of a kinetic attack, aerial attack against the states of Israel. So, for example, there is rumored to be disquiet among the Jordanians at the notion that they will again be required to defend against Iran's missiles, rockets launched towards the states of Israel. There is said to be disquiet among the Egyptians who have expressed that they are feeling the strain and feeling the pinch when it comes to having to be part of this air defense area. They were involved in that back in April as well. 
So the work of Carilla right now on the ground, that commander of CENTCOM, is to make sure that all of the relevant parties, all of the relevant parties, play their part, play their role, and ensure that just as Iran's attack in April was stymied, so too will any future attack by the Iranians. But I want to make something very clear. Iran was not successful when it launched the attack back in April. That doesn't mean that it did not intend to be successful, but there is a key difference. Firstly, in April, there are two key differences. In April, Iran telegraphed its intent to launch the attack against Israel by about a 13-day period. Now it's not telegraphing. Now we really are in a situation where it is not being spoken about, it is merely being expected. And also, another key difference is Iran may choose not to target sovereign Israel, precisely because of the ineffectiveness of its previous attack, but it may seek to target assets of allies of the state of Israel and even, even Jewish communities throughout the world in the Jewish diaspora. So all Jewish facilities will be increasing their security, including in the United Kingdom at this time, because of the threat of an Iranian reprisal, because of the threat of the engagement of Hezbollah in that reprisal.